Oh boy. Of everything that I have to teach you, this is going to be the hardest because I have to get you to the point where you can make sense of this. Start by downloading before you fly. This is the program that's going to simplify things for you when you want to fly. By the way, it was made by the FAA, so why not? It's also a good way for you to see what the aeronautical map looks like in your area. Let's start with the basics. Mean sea level, MSL, or above ground level, AGL. Above ground level, that's pretty simple. Above ground level in however many feet it is above the ground. Mean sea level, however many feet it is above mean sea level. You'll be flying up to 400 feet above ground level, but you can't fly up to 400 feet above ground level in all conditions. We'll get to that in a bit. It doesn't matter what the altitude is of mean sea level where you're at. What matters is that you can't fly above 400 feet above ground level, unless there's an exception to almost every rule here, and I promise we're gonna get to that later. For now, just remember 400 feet AGL. Let's talk about airspace. This is an aeronautical map. There is controlled and uncontrolled airspace. Controlled airspace is A through E. Controlled airspace is A through E. Uncontrolled airspace, that's G, which is everything that's not designated as A, B, C, D, or E, or any of the special things we're going to get to later. A remote pilot does not need air traffic control authorization to operate in Class G airspace. We love Class G airspace. It's great. Get it? Great. Class G airspace is great. Can you get air traffic control authorization to fly in controlled space? Yes. Promise to get to that. Let's start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Class A is above everything, okay? Think of it as above everything, Class A. From 18,000 feet, MSL, mean sea level, to FL 600. What? Where did FL come from? Anytime you see the letters FL, it means flight level. Add on two zeros, and it's that height in feet. So 600 means 60,000. FL 400 means 40,000. What's the difference between MSL and FL? Where MSL suggests a definitive distance above mean sea level, FL refers to a height as determined by barometric pressure. All you need to know right now is that Class A airspace is from 18,000 mean sea level to FL 600 or 60,000 feet. Until we get to Class E, the numbers for controlled airspace on an aeronautical map are in MSL. MSL, unless otherwise stated. Class B, Class Blue. Class Blue, it gets kind of strange. You see that upside down layer cake? That's the shape of Class Blue airspace. Why do I keep on calling it Class Blue? On most aeronautical maps, Class B airspace is represented by a solid blue line. You'll note that there are three increasing layers of airspace stacked on top of each other. Class Blue are two or more layers, usually above a busy airport. For each one of those layers, you'll see a circle around that airport or something resembling a circle in a solid blue line. Example. This is Oscar Romeo Delta, ORD, Chicago's busiest airport, Chicago's O'Hare Airport. The inner circle normally goes down to the surface, represented by SFC, Sierra Foxtrot Charlie. You'll see two numbers, one over the other. It's not a fraction. It's the minimum height of the airspace to the maximum height. It means from the surface to 10,000 feet MSL, always add two zeros, is class blue airspace, represented in this case by the first layer of the layer cake. Now let's go to the second ring around O'Hare Airport. Our airspace is already starting to get a little bit messy. It says 100 over 19, add two zeros. 
1,900 feet MSL is the controlled airspace in that ring. On the second layer, it goes up all the way up to 10,000 feet of the layer cake. But wait, there's a section of the cake that's marked 100 over 25. For that section only, it's going to be from 2,500 feet to 10,000 feet is controlled airspace. Here's an interesting fact. Right now I'm underneath that second ring of O'Hare's Class B airspace. I'm underneath that 1,900 feet. Most commercial airlines will not fly in this space because of height restrictions and speed restrictions. But guess who does? We fly, drone pilots fly, because as long as we're underneath 400 feet AGL, we're all good. There's no other flight restrictions in this space. Let's move out to the third layer from the bottom. In the case of O'Hare, it's 100 over 30. Add two zeros. That's 10,000 feet over 3,000 feet MSL. If you are below 3,000 feet in that ring and there are no other restrictions, it's uncontrolled airspace. What's 100 over 25? There's a tiny dotted arrow pointing to a slice in the inner ring that is 2,500 to 10,000 feet. You'll also notice that there's a 33 there. That's another piece of airspace that goes to 3,300 feet in the air. That box indicates that 3,300 is the top limit of that airspace. Let's move to another ring. 100 over 3,600. 3,600 down here, do the math. You add two zeros, up to 10,000. There's one more ring, it's kind of a piece of the ring. It's 100 over 40. Say it with me, 4,000 feet up to 10,000 feet. You get the point. We're going to come back to this class blue airspace in a moment. That's good airspace. Just for now, I need you to take a look at the legend on the map. Always check the legend on any aeronautical map. It'll answer most of your questions. Let's say you were taking the part 107 test and you're looking at an aeronautical map, but you don't remember the answer. It's completely possible that you'll find a legend on another page in the supplemental material on the test. Just, just saying. In this case, we want you to look at how airspace is designated. You'll notice that the colors alternate between blue and red until it gets to class E. If you can remember that class B is blue, everything alternates after that. Let's visit class C, solid red. Class C, solid red. Chicago's Midway International Airport, MDW, Mike Delta Whiskey, overlaps with the class B airspace of O'Hare. In this case, it's kind of a magenta color. Don't worry about that. And also you should know that the airspace isn't to scale. You'll see that it's actually marked as Chicago class C on the chart. It's a surface area that has five nautical mile radius and an outer circle with a 10 nautical mile radius. You'll see T over SFC. We already know that SFC is the surface. What's T? Well, in this case, T means the ceiling too, but not including the floor of B. You'll notice that this is underneath the B airspace of Chicago's O'Hare Airport. T means the ceiling, but not including the floor of class B. What is T over 19? T over 19, the floor is 1900. The ceiling is two, but not including the class B airspace above it. Class D, dotted blue line airspace. D, dotted blue line airspace. Usually from the surface to 2500 MSL. By the way, these nicknames, these aren't official nicknames. I'm just making these up. Class D, dotted blue line airspace. This is DuPage. DPA, otherwise known as Delta Papa Alpha. The box gives you the height of the airspace in MSL. It's 33 or 3,300 feet mean sea level. 33 or 3,300 feet mean sea level. 
Class E airspace gets complicated. So stick with me, okay? The most important thing for you to know is that you, the pilot in command, will normally not need ATC authorization in order to operate in Class E airspace. The number is usually the floor and it's normally in AGL. The floor of Class E airspace is in AGL above ground level. Class E airspace normally extends all the way up to 18,000 feet MSL. All the way up to 18,000 feet MSL. All airspace above FL 600, you remember Class A airspace goes up to flight level 600. Everything above that is considered Class E. Holy crap. If it's a dotted magenta line, then it starts at the surface. Most Class E airspaces that you'll see on a chart are a graduated red line. I like to call it an expanded red line. Why do I like to call it an expanded red line? Class E, expanded. The floor of an expanded red line is 700 feet AGL. 700 feet AGL. If the line is an expanded blue line, the floor starts at 1200 AGL. Pontiac, PNT, Papa November Tango. One would never want to drive into Pontiac because they give you traffic tickets unfairly. But if you flew into Pontiac, it's an expanded red line, Class E. The floor of the airspace is 700 feet AGL. But remember, it goes all the way up to 18,000 feet. That's why I made this particular cupcake really, really tall. Remember, the floor of it is 700 feet AGL, but it goes all the way up to 18,000 feet. You may see this. It's a nav beacon, and they are often near airports. You need to learn how to recognize them so you don't confuse them with airspace. You see the numbers? Those are obviously points of direction. That's how you can tell that it's a nav beacon. Class G airspace, it is general use. Everything that is not A, B, C, D, or E is general use R space. We're not even close to done. Oh my God. Let's address special use airspace, otherwise known as SAO, Special Area of Operation. You'll find specific information on these things at the end panel of all the charts. For now, they are prohibited areas, restricted areas, warning areas, military operation areas, otherwise known as MOAs, alert areas, and controlled firing areas, otherwise known as CFAs. <sighs> prohibited. P followed by a number. The flight of an aircraft is, say it with me, prohibited. In this case, it's in Jacksonville. I like to think that those little lines that are right next to each other, they kind of look like bars to like, stay out, stay out of this area. So whenever you see those areas that are like that, just think, stay out. You're probably not supposed to be there. Restricted areas. In this case, it's areas that are hazards to non-participating aircraft. Think military operations, perhaps. They're charted by R and a number. If the restricted area is not active and has been released to the FAA, the Air Traffic Control Facility allows the aircraft to operate in the restricted airspace without issuing a specific clearance for it. This is near Albuquerque. And this is restricted airspace. Warning areas. Airspace of defined dimensions, extending from three nautical miles outward from the coast of the United States, containing activity that may be hazardous to non-participating aircraft. It is a W followed by the number. MOA, Military Operation Area. Whenever I do quotes, by the way, that means it is the rule. Whenever an MOA is used, Non-participating IFR traffic may be cleared through an MOA, Military Operational Area, if instrument flight rule separation can be provided by ATC, 
That means it doesn't include us, okay? Otherwise, air traffic control reroutes or restricts non-participating IFR traffic. We're not instrument flight rules. That doesn't include us. Military training routes that are MTR, they are IR and VR followed by a number and arrow with MTRs that may include one or two segments above 1,500 feet AGL. Now, if you noticed, that's 1,500 feet AGL. That means it's above the areas that we're going to operate in. There's still more. I want to take a second to talk about latitude and longitude because it's something that has always confused me. Latitude. Those lines run parallel to the lines of the equator, east and west. The equator is considered zero degrees, so you have 360 degrees. There are 180 north and 180 south. Each degree is divided into 60 minutes, then each of those 60 are divided into seconds. So there's 60 minutes, 60 seconds. One minute of latitude, or one sixtieth of a degree, is good enough in most cases to measure a nautical mile. One sixtieth of a degree is enough to equal a nautical mile. It's not exact, but it's helpful in measuring distances. Longitude. Longitude is a meridian, and it runs north and south. The prime meridian is zero degrees. Remember that when you're looking at charts and starting to understand longitude and latitude. And I'll cover that more later. No TAMs. Notices to Airmen. N-O-T-A-M. Notices to Airmen. They're temporary information, current notices, and essential to our safety. Uh, they include hazards like air shows, flights by heads of states, temporary obstacles near airfields. They also have notices about birds that are known as bird TAMs. Bird TAMs, yeah, it's an actual term, bird TAMs. Maximum elevation numbers. There's a large number with a small number. Don't forget to add two zeros. So if you see a 12 with a small five next to it, that's 12,500 feet. That's the maximum elevation number in that area. Obstructions. You'll see two numbers. The elevation of the top above mean sea level is on the top. Right below it, in parentheses, is the height above ground level, the height in AGL. A few other things I want you to recognize now. A parachute jumping area symbol. It looks like this. That will be on the chart. Know how to recognize it. Know how to read the information about it. UA in red, that is unmanned aircraft activity. A wind turbine farm, it looks like this. Just recognize it so that you know how to read that part of the chart. The most important thing about an aeronautical chart is just downloading them and look at them. The Foxtrot Alpha Alpha has a bunch of aeronautical charts that you can download on their website. I'm going to link to them down here. Go there, download the one for your area and start taking a look at it. Use the study guide and use this video to start realizing what the different uses are in your area. That's it for this chapter. Ugh. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a bunch of cake to eat. Best of luck studying, pilot in command. Fly safely. Don't forget to subscribe.